Joining us now, Kim Chi, MD. He is the Associate Professor of Medicine and Chair of the GU Tumor Group at the British Columbia Cancer Agency in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Thanks for joining us. Not a problem. Glad to be here. So you come from one of the most beautiful cities on the on the planet, but you do things a little differently up there in medicine. You can't just ask the government for money and they give it to you. You have to give them something in form of proof. That's right. We have a quite a formal process where we evaluate the evidence in a independent manner, and then there's also um, a cost benefit analysis done as well. And then we merge those two to look at what is the evidence of benefit, what's the level of evidence, uh, as well match it against the side effects and the cost benefit ratios. And then a decision is made about funding. So we have a single pair, um, much like I would, would assume Medicare works, but uh, this applies to all, um, all people in British Columbia and across Canada. In the uh, rapidly evolving prostate cancer uh, treatment landscape, what do you see as maybe the most exciting or most compelling uh, treatments or targets? Well, it's been a very exciting last couple of years, and we have had a number of agents that have evolved and have shown benefits in phase three trials. And uh, what's going to be a challenge is how we move all these forward and where, where are they positioned. I think the two most exciting things that happen, have happened at this ASCO um, has been the evidence with abiraterone and prednisone in patients that are chemotherapy naive and the data with MDV3100, the anti-androgen in patients that are previously docetaxel pre-treated. Now both of these are showing benefits in patients with the abiraterone acetate, it was an interim analysis and that showed a very large difference in progression-free survival. And there was a difference in overall survival, but it hasn't quite met the um, statistical significant level that uh, the interim analysis required. But it's very compelling data. And it really reaffirms what we, we've been thinking, is that these agents, instead of b b waiting until after chemotherapy, that really they should be brought forward before chemotherapy. Um, the other agent is MDV3100, and that has shown an overall survival advantage in a similar fashion to abiraterone acetate in the post-docetaxel setting. And so I think it's a natural conclusion that I think we'll see MDV3100, the data will come out on the pre-chemo setting, and I'm sure we'll see similar benefits in terms of progression-free survival and overall survival. So I think this ASCO, those are two of the most exciting things that have happened um, in terms of prostate cancer. How significant do you, do you view the data from this year's meeting? Well, abiraterone acetate has changed practice. Um, and I think with the um, introduction of this into the chemotherapy naive patient group and to show that it's a benefit there is huge. And basically there are a lot of patients that we can't treat with chemotherapy. And in some surveys, it may be 50% of patients never received docetaxel chemotherapy as a standard. But abiraterone, because of its good tolerability, we can now treat many patients and offer them more treatments that um, are a new treatment that can improve their overall survival. Now, closer to you, you've got updated data on OGX427, uh, the in inhibitor of HSP27. In what you're presenting, what are the key takeaways from it? Well, this is a, a new agent. It's a it's an antisense inhibitor, so it inhibits the expression of heat shock protein 27. And, and it's been known for a while that heat shock protein 27 is overexpressed in prostate cancer. And also, it, it works to, in one way, one of the ways it works is to inhibit the androgen receptor or to actually help the androgen receptor. So OGX427 um, inhibits HSP27, shuts it down, and therefore, one of its effects is also to shut down androgen receptor signaling. So in that context, we took this into a phase two trial of uh, OGX427, and we randomized patients to that versus prednisone. And as what we've seen is that OGX427 has had a high response rate, 50% PSA response rate, and in patients with measurable disease, uh, out of nine patients with measurable disease, four have had objective responses, one of them a complete response, which has lasted almost a year at this point. So these preliminary data are very exciting. It's a new target, and it's a new way of targeting this target with the antisense technology showing single agent activity. So it's a proof of concept that, um, uh, that, that this is an important target for prostate cancer, 
and that this drug is effective in hitting it. Um, and so this will allow us to design the next set of studies because, for example, abiraterone and MDV3100, they are not cures. Very good treatments, but eventually patients progress. And one of the mechanisms that it can be progressing through is through overexpression of HSP27. So we see this as being able to add on or a com combination to these agents to help extend further uh, patient benefits. You're constantly dealing with moving parts. Yes, yes, which makes it exciting and it's good for patients. Um, and because of all the biology that we're understanding prostate cancer, it's be, that's what's led to the situation we are now with a plethora of new treatments that have benefits for patients. Great to have something to tell patients you have something new. Yes. Thanks for dropping by, spending some time with us. Thank you. Dr. Kim Chi, he is the Associate Professor of Medicine and Chair of the GU Tumor Group the British Columbia Cancer Agency in Vancouver, joining us here to discuss the latest in prostate cancer at ASCO 2012.